Now, I'm used to getting jimes about how young I look, but I'm about to meet someone who makes me feel like an old age pensioner. Uh, that's Miley Black. She's now 21. But at the age of 20 years old at the last general election, uh, she was elected as a member of parliament. Of course, she's in the Scottish National Party. I'm at their spring conference here. And uh, she uh, defeated Labour's shadow foreign secretary in a landslide victory. And she's been a bit of a political sensation since. Yay! So I want to find out what makes a tick. Someone so young at the absolute heart of Scottish politics, uh, you know, what she thinks of everything from the plight of Labour to young people, uh, what made her believe in the things she does. Firstly, I'm really worried that I'm mispronouncing your name. Uh -huh. So how would you do it, Matt? Right, Matt. See, as in, if you were to propose to me... Should I get on my knees? This is, this you is can, a big moment for me. But I wasn't ready for this level of commitment. <laughs> Considering what way I sway, <laughs> I don't think you'd like the answer. But, um, no, uh, as or in... Me. Uh, well, I true. <laughs> but, um, will you marry me? That, when, the day <laughs> someone poses to you, they're going to uh -huh. have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> Great start. Um, if I could wave a magic wand... Yes. ...and either of these two scenarios could happen, mm -hmm. a... Britain with a government led by someone with the politics of Jeremy ah. Corbyn or an independent Scotland. Yes. What would you go for? An independent Scotland. Why is that? Me and Jeremy Corbyn agree on an awful lot of things, but there's two problems. One, his own party and a lot of his own party don't agree with him. But second of all, even if they all did, the way the United Kingdom works is that it is, what is it, four nations? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Four nations put together. <laughs> Simple maths there. <laughs> four nations put together which means that there will inevitably have to be compromise all the time. England, being the predominant part of the UK, has pursued policies that are more right-wing. And I don't think it's right that Scotland as a country should have to be dependent on whether England wants a Jeremy Corbyn or whether England votes for uh, the right way or the, the way that I, I would hope they would vote. The only way that we're going to get the United Kingdom to function well and to have countries that work together is by making sure that we're all on an equal level, whereby Scotland has the power to build the nation that it wants to build, because I would love to see an independent social Scotland. So in a socialist Scotland, yeah. what, would it, what would it look like to you? Would we have publicly owned rail energy? I, th I do, I think there's an argument behind the, the or railway uh, being public. Uh, Would you like the SNB health. to commit to it now? Would you like them to come out? Well, that's to... the thing, we don't have the power to do it. That's so a personal preference. It's like. a personal preference, aye. aye. So, because uh, I think that when you have things that people are relying on, I think it makes sense that it's a case of, you know, this is a necessity, we're paying for it. It's the same way where people complain about the NHS because they say, oh, we spend all this money, it's such a high cost. Do you know what? So what? If that's what the amount of money that's needed, then do it. It doesn't matter if it's running at a loss. There's certain things as a society where we should go, no, we're paying for that. Tuition fees, there should be no tuition fees. Education should never be resting upon someone's ability to pay. It should always be on the basis of what your ability is in terms of learning. Nicola Sturge is arguably uh, the most impressive politician nationally. Aye, she's because, no bad. She's, right, she? <laughs> she's no bad. And she's, she's got this, she's made you know, a very articulate case against austerity. Uh -huh. The critics of the SNP, what they've argued is that there's nothing redistributive about the SNP's uh -huh. policies. Uh -huh. is it, what do you think, what policies uh -huh. do you think, what would you when say you, to that? There's when not you a single think, right, when you think of where Scotland was, where it's stereotypically thought as, as a left-wing country, it's been Labour for years and years and years, right? In the last two years, there has been a seismic historical shift from Labour, proper old Labour, to SNP. You get people like myself, who, whose heroes are Keir Hardy and Tony Benn at an SNP conference, an SNP Member of Parliament. That's because in the last 10 years or so, the SNP is the only party that's actually been trying to help folk at the bottom. No tuition fees, that's massive. You know, trying to, uh, no, no prescription charges. All of these things are redistributed. I mean, I'm a passionate supporter of uh -huh. education. And yeah. I suppose, I mean, the, the, the reality we face across the country, of course, is poorer students still aren't going to university uh -huh. in Scotland, England, and Wales, and the numbers I think we both like. Yeah. But uh, so, do you, I mean, is there anything more do you think that you'd like the SNP to do in terms of redistributing wealth from, from richer Scots? Um, well, I mean, obviously, we're in a, a very difficult position right now in that no matter what we do, there is one hand tied behind the back because of Westminster. You know, I think, uh, like, I know the Scottish Labour just now are, are constantly punting this idea of SNP cuts, SNP cuts. They're not our cuts. What happens is Westminster goes, right, that, that's the Scottish budget and that's all we get. If they go, right, we're taking that off, that's your Scottish budget this year. It's the reality of the situation we're in just now. Right now, I think our priority's got to be 
trying to protect people where we can, but we'll always be limited in doing that. Scottish Labour, they've caused in this campaign, they've uh -huh. caused a bit of controversy with their tax plan. Yes. Because at the moment, so people understand, yeah. if you want to increase income tax in Scotland, it has to be 1p across the board. Yeah. So that means that yeah. if you're on 20%, it goes up by 1p, uh -huh. as well as people on the top rate of tax. Yeah. So their, their idea is that you get a rebate if you earn £20,000 yes. or, or less. And the argument that's been put forward by the Scottish TUC and others is uh -huh. that that's redistributed, it's, it's progressive, it's redistributed. Yeah. Do you not think that, as a, as a temporary measure, that No, be I call it the union tax because what Labour are saying, in order to compensate for all of the Tory cuts for a government that we didn't vote for, in fact, we totally rejected, mm. so let's not forget, we were elected on an anti-austerity basis, cuts from an unelected government to Scotland, their answer is to tax Scottish people effectively twice for not even a better service, but to maintain the same level of service. So Scottish people should be taxed twice for the fact that Labour gave them a false promise that Westminster was better for them. I think that's ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous. You hate people saying this over and over again, because ah. it's going to be a bit of a cliche, but you are the youngest yes. MP. Yes. Argument, I think since, by one estimate, since the 17th century, there's a bit of a debate over I've this. I've heard umpteen different dates, so I'm sticking to the youngest in a while. A while, a while, <laughs> a while. definitely a while. <laughs> if I was to go in a time machine back right. five years ago uh -huh. and say to you, that in 2015, uh -huh. you would become a member of parliament. Uh -huh. How would you react to it? <laughs> Mental. Give me some of what you're on. <laughs> it was just, it would never have crossed my mind ever. You were sitting in your finals, actually. Aye, I am still at uni. And, and that's quite a stressful period for most people. But <laughs> towards the end of that, you won a landslide victory over one of the Labour's most senior figures, Douglas yeah. Alexander. That yeah. moment when that result was announced, uh -huh. how, how did you feel? To be honest, I was just that concentrated on making sure I don't slip up, you know, because I was just dead aware this is historical what's happening right yeah. now and of course there's cameras going nuts and things. To be honest, I was quite numb when it was all happening. Um, afterwards when I was able to reflect on it, I was actually just really, really pleased for all the folk who've been working for this all their lives. In actual fact, the, the group that are down in Westminster, I think if you said to pretty much most of them five years ago, do you know you're going to be an MP, they would have had the exactly the same reaction. It, honestly came from the referendum period. It was just, it transformed Scotland and it transformed my life and life of so many people. And then all of a sudden you started to go, actually, things do need to change a bit here. Can you describe what that referendum campaign did uh -huh. to you and your, your politics, I suppose, mm. and also that of Scotland? How would you sum it up? In all honesty, I would say an awakening. The only way to beat the Tories was to vote Labour, vote Labour, vote Labour, keep out the Tories, vote Labour, keep out the Tories, which meant that for about 30 years, People were just sleepwalking into the polls and people let their political engagement fall, they let their intellect fall, people stop thinking about things because it's got to be better than whatever the Tories are doing. And then all of a sudden the referendum came along and it was like, well, wait a minute, actually this isn't right. And in many ways we were looking at the Labour Party and suddenly going, well, where's, what's the difference here? Oh no, that. I don't agree with that, I don't agree with that. In fact, what have you been doing for the last 20 years in Parliament? You know, so people started to think about things and, and all of a sudden you get normal punters talking about the most in-depth policy. By the time the general election came around, you had a highly educated population and a highly articulate population, which meant that you could get normal folk able to articulate themselves, and I put myself in that category. What do you think has happened to the Scottish Labour Party? Because Scotland was a heartland in so many Aye. ways of Labour. 41 MPs down to one. Yeah. How do you explain that? What, what, what was your analysis as there's, someone from a Labour there's family? There's two things. The first thing is a total complacency. Because it was a given that Labour were going to get in, they never had to campaign. And they genuinely didn't. They didn't have to do anything, which also meant that the calibre of candidates did not have to be impressive because they were in. If you put a, a monkey in a rosette, they'd still vote for it, you know, and it's true, it, it, it would have happened. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that the Labour Party has always been torn in that there is a reality that it does not matter a jot if they win every single seat in Scotland. So the, the entirety of Scotland can be outvoted by one city. The city of London can outvote an entire country. And that meant, right, if we try and go more left wing to win all of Scotland, we might get their votes, but we won't become in government, right? But we might have to go right wing in order to win votes down south. But then that means we lose Scotland. So they're, they're this humming and hawing between the two, and they can't quite place themselves, which has left them ultimately not knowing what they stand for. A lot of people in the Labour Party just now that, to me, are soft conservatives, you know, and they're certainly not in any Labour Party that my family came from. 
you've got a low opinion of Westminster before you turn yeah. up. That yeah. was how low it was. Uh-huh. Where is it now compared to that? Uh, yeah. Oh, blimey. <laughs> yes. So it was already pretty low. But pretty now low, it's, yes. What, what, I mean, what are the things that frustrate you most about him? All the things that I thought and argued during the referendum and during the general election have unfortunately turned out to be totally true. It is a complete boys club. Totally. If you want to talk about barriers into politics, I cover quite a lot of bases. I'm young, female, gay, I'm SMP, you know, so we're hardly the most popular down in uh, Westminster. But even when I'm there, I am taken aback by, in the first instance, how patronising some folk were, and the second instance, how sexist people were, and it's subtle sexism. What sort of, do you have any examples? You know, of just the, the arrogance and the darlings and the, oh, don't worry yourself and all this rubbish, you know. It's so excluded from reality. It's unbelievable. A bubble. Ah, it's a total world unto itself. I think it's a, a totally defunct institution that has to drag itself out of the 21st century if it, ha- if it has any hope of surviving. It allows tradition to rule over reason, which is just ridiculous. They Without making the ambassador of all young people, yeah. um, <laughs> uh-huh. the young people are getting a battering at the moment, disproportionately, yes. uh-huh. especially working class and many middle class young yes. people. What, what did you learn from the independence campaign about how you can organise young people and, and, mm. and how do you think, you know, not only in Scotland we can learn from that in order you know, to... It's ultimately, people are engaged and they get involved for all the same reasons. It's the minute you're able to point out, by the way, this affects your life and here's how it does it. And it's the minute people make the connection between going, right, wait a minute, food prices are going up but my wages aren't. Right, that happened because that get voted through. Who voted that through? Oh, that was them. Oh, right, okay, right, I'm starting to understand this. People get involved once it starts affecting them and they see how society is working and how, I suppose, how the Conservatives manipulate society an awful lot. The minute they awaken to it, they're able to go, oh no, this isn't on, I'm doing something different. So it's not a case of trying to, you know, make a, a sort of niche special tweak in order to let's engage with young folk and things like that. If anything, I, I think that's incredibly patronising. I think, no, they understand politics and politics affects them the same way as disabled people are getting battered just now, the same way low-wage workers are getting battered just now. So I tell you what, why don't we all get together and start questioning this stuff? Quick fire questions. Yes. What do you think when I say these names? Nicola Sturgeon. She's no bad. She's good. David Cameron. <laughs> uh, he's disengaged. Disengaged? Disengaged. I was expecting something stronger than that. Disengaged. Restraining myself. It's Jeremy Corbyn. Good. Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton? Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Are you scared about Donald Trump? I'm absolutely terrified. I mean, you would laugh and then you remember this guy's in the lead. You know, the things he says are unbelievable. Unbelievable. And the, how stupid the things he says are. It's really scary. It's, it's Germany in 1930s, almost. You know, it's, it's really terrifying. Do you believe in your lifetime we would build the sort of society that you'd like, ideally, to see? A socialist society? Oh, I definitely think Scotland will get its independence. And I think when it gets its independence, a socialist country is much more likely. So, aye. I'm going to keep trying anyway. <laughs> Cheers, Mary. No nice worries, one. thanks Cheers, for having me. Cheers, Owen. <laughs> Bit intimidating. When I was 20, I was just lounging around in my pants hungover. She was getting elected as a Member of Parliament and defeating political heavyweights and having maiden speeches which were trending in Nigeria. Fascinating stuff, though. I think she's a very interesting politician, whatever you think in terms of politics or Scotland or independence or anything like that. Uh, I think it'd be great to have more young people involved in politics, especially given young people are getting a battering. So hopefully she sets a bit of an example there, encouraging other young people, wherever they live, uh, to take an interest in politics, which is definitely something I'm trying to do through this channel. Got lots of other interviews, which you can see there, there. And uh, we've got lots of other interviews to come, so, uh, so do stay tuned. Leave your comments, want to hear what you think. I'll answer some of them. And uh, subscribe. I'll see you next time.